Hello, all you big, beautiful brains out there. Today, we're going to talk about sense of direction. Before we get started, take a minute to subscribe to Psy vs. Psy. How about your friendly neighborhood psychologist while I tell you all about how psychologists study your sense of direction. I frequently get lost. And I mean lost. One time I notoriously got lost on a cul-de-sac. Don't ask. The way our brains interpret and understand directions is hugely critical to our lives and, in the early days for humans, could be something that prevents survival, if you're that bad at it. So, for psychologists, studying sense of direction is pretty big in understanding our brain and behavior. But exactly how do psychologists go about it? There is a self-assessment for sense of direction, developed in the early 2000s called the Santa Barbara Sense of Direction Scale. As a self-assessment, though, it can only really tell us people's feelings about how good or bad their sense of direction is. So, if you think you're really good at direction, but maybe you're really more like me, that self-assessment might not necessarily match. Psychologists do know that there are at least two ways we can think about getting from here to there. One method people use is route knowledge, also called navigational or just directions. You follow step A, then step B, turn left here, and you'll get there. This step-by-step -step method can either use actual names of streets or landmarks that you will see along the way. Another method people use is called cognitive maps. That's when you literally have a map inside your head of an entire area. This method is especially useful when creating novel ways to travel someplace. Say you need to be at a certain intersection and you know how to get to one of the cross streets from where your cognitive map is. You can get to where you need to be without ever having driven that way before. An important thing to remember is that having a good sense of direction isn't something that just comes automatically or inherently. A study all the way back in 1977 showed that there were two main factors involved in improving getting to a new place for those who felt they had a good sense of direction. The first is that the individual has to make a conscious effort to orient. That means they have to actively think about where they're going. If you stop and think about times in your own experience when you've had to navigate someplace new, this makes a lot of sense. Say you're at a big theme park or an airport, you have to actively think about the best way to get somewhere, sometimes even literally stopping to think before heading off again. The other thing that helps improve your sense of direction is repeated exposure to an environment. And this one probably makes even more sense. The first time we go somewhere, we have to really think hard about where exactly to go. But by the fourth or fifth time you've been there, you can usually get around with not that much difficulty. As good as some people are with maps, there are definitely people who might just be neurologically incapable of having a sense of direction. The condition is called developmental topographic disorientation, and people living with it cannot make mental maps. Developmental topographic disorientation really impacts the way people get around, and it's absolutely no fault of their own. Their brains just seem to be built that way. There's no structural damage to their brains, and it seems to be reported by people who experience it fairly early in life. So it's probably a lifelong condition that you're born with, but scientists just don't yet know why. If you're looking for some direction in your life, make sure you subscribe to Psy vs. Psy so you can get all of our other videos and you can learn all about the science of psychology. Until next time, keep thinking, and I'll see y'all later. Bye! The story about how I got lost in the cul-de-sac is actually really simple. I got a little turned around.